Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video is part of a series on the topic of unemployment. Last lesson, we learned some definitions and some formulas related to unemployment. I'll have a link to that video in the description below. We learned that unemployment is the situation where individuals are actively seeking work but can't find it. Today we'll be exploring the types of unemployment and their causes. I'll be supporting this lesson with lots of examples. The most observable type of unemployment is cyclical unemployment. This is unemployment that is caused by downturns in the economy. This happens because falling economic activity is associated with less spending or aggregate demand. This leads to lower demand for labor. You can observe this as the unemployment rate often increases when the GDP growth rate is lower. Governments often try to reduce cyclical unemployment by using expansionary macroeconomic policy, as this would increase aggregate demand and in turn, increase the demand for labor. It's very important to be able to distinguish between cyclical unemployment and the following types, because this distinction will help you grasp the upcoming topic of the Nehru, which is considered one of the most complex topics of this course. The second type of unemployment that we'll look at is structural unemployment. This is when there's a mismatch between labor skills and the jobs offered. This is often caused by changes in technology, consumer demand, or microeconomic reforms, such as free trade. These factors cause structural change, rendering some labor skills obsolete. Structural unemployment is harder to reduce, as it's not just a simple matter of increasing aggregate demand. Workers must be retrained with updated skills before they can get employed again. One example of structural change is the decline of the manufacturing industry and growth of other industries as a result of increased trade with China. You can see the decline of employment in manufacturing and a bit of a time lag before we saw growth in other industries. This decline and time lag is evidence of structural unemployment. Frictional unemployment is made up of people who are moving between a finished job and a new one. This is caused by the search times needed for workers to find new jobs. It's considered inevitable because even in a growing and stable economy, an imperfect flow of information exists. An example would be an actress who has just finished filming and is looking for her next job or a student who's just started job seeking after graduating. Hardcore unemployment is unemployment that arises from the worker's personal circumstances, such as substance abuse, disabilities, family tragedies, or natural disasters. Seasonal unemployment is defined as unemployment that occurs at regular and predictable times of the years due to the nature of the industry. For example, ski instructors would experience unemployment when winter is over in their location. Other examples of seasonal unemployment are mall Santas after Christmas or Easter bunnies after Easter. Hidden unemployment was explained in my previous video, but for the purpose of a recap, it refers to people who are underutilized but not counted in the official definition of unemployment because they're not actively seeking. This could refer to stay at home parents or discouraged job seekers and so on. Next is long term unemployment, which refers to those who have been out of work for 12 months or longer. This can sometimes be attributed to hysteresis which is a term used to describe the progression from temporary causes for unemployment to long-term unemployment patterns. For example, imagine a worker getting retrenched as his firm downsizes during recession. Typically, the cyclically unemployed would gain a job again as soon as economic activity picks up again. But what if he loses his skills during this time? Perhaps due to lack of use? Then he would be structurally unemployed and this would take him a long time to find a job, possibly more than 12 months. This progression is an example of hysteresis. This example also shows one of the many issues associated with long-term unemployment. Those who have been unemployed for a prolonged period of time usually find it harder to find a job because they could lose skills or productivity as they're not using or practicing their skills. They also miss opportunities for on-the-job training, further worsening their skills. Mental or emotional barriers could also arise as they lose enthusiasm or positive outlook over time. There would also be stigma from the employer's perspective, wondering why this worker has taken so long to be employed. Overall, this leads to the long-term unemployed taking longer to be reabsorbed into the workforce compared to someone who's recently unemployed, which further perpetuates the problem. Let's see if we can apply your understanding of these different types of unemployment on these HSC questions. 2013's question 11 asks which type of unemployment would not be affected by this structural change? At a quick glance, I'd say that this has nothing to do with seasonal unemployment, so the answer is A. But let's go through the other options and make sure. Frictional unemployment would occur because some of these workers are going to spend time in between jobs. Structural unemployment is clear because this example is an example of structural change, causing some workers' skills to become obsolete. This may lead to long-term unemployment too because of hysteresis. This confirms that A is the correct answer. One more term that we must learn is underemployment. This refers to the people who are working less than full-time but would like more hours. 
The ABS publishes the underemployment rate too, and it's calculated as the number of underemployed as a proportion of the labor force, shown as a percentage. It's worth studying the trends in underemployment as well as unemployment. The causes for high underemployment are similar to that of unemployment. For example, cyclical factors can cause falling demand for labor, but there are also structural factors, such as industries preferring part-time or casual working arrangements, or casualization. Sometimes I get a bit concerned that students get so caught up with studying unemployment that they forget to study underemployment in detail. Here's a couple of HSC short answer questions to see if you can really distinguish between the two concepts. 2012's question 24a is practically a distinguish or differentiate question. A simple way to approach these types of questions is to provide definitions of both, but add a conjunction word in between. For example, underemployment is the situation where a worker working less than full-time hours is actively seeking and is available for more hours. Whereas, however, contrastingly, on the other hand, hidden unemployment is when the person is not actively seeking and therefore does not fall under the official definition of unemployment. Now let's look at part B. It asks us to account for why changes in underemployment might not affect the unemployment rate. This is because whether a worker is working full-time or part-time, they're counted as employed. So if a full-time worker is given less hours, they'll contribute to the underemployment rate, but not the unemployment rate as they're still employed. I hope my explanations and examples have made it easier for you to understand different types of unemployment and their causes. My next video will be a continuation in the series on unemployment, with me looking at some of the effects of unemployment. Subscribe to the channel and follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss future videos. If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share the video too. I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easy for you. See you next time.